Well, we're going to try to graph this thing and we need to find some different things about our function. First thing you would want to do is find the y-intercept. In other words, let x be 0. And a good way to do that, because of all the other things we want to do, is factor first. It's nice things happen if you factor first. So on the top we would have x times x plus 3. And on the bottom we'd have x minus 3 and x plus 1 to give us a minus 2. So if we let everything be 0 in here, if I let this be 0 and let this be 0 plus 3 and multiply, that's going to give me 0 on top. 0 divided by anything is just going to be 0. So we would have, so we're going to have a y-intercept at 0, 0. Again, 0 divided by anything is 0. So now we want to find the zeros of the numerator. Well, that means that x is going to be equal to 0. So there it is. And it also means that x plus 3 is going to be equal to 0. So x is going to be equal to negative 3. So my two zeros are at 0, which we figured from the y-intercept, and negative 3. Now we want to find the zeros of the denominator. Well, that's going to be x minus 3 equals 0, and that will give us x equals 3. And then we have x plus 1 equals 0, and that's going to be x equal negative 1. Now what we found here was the y-intercept. When we found the zeros of the numerator, we actually found the x-intercepts. And when we found the zeros of the denominator, what we really found are the vertical asymptotes. And we want to determine if it changes side from one asymptote to the other. Well, we have to go back and look at the degrees. And they're both odd. So that means that we will change sign at both vertical asymptotes. Compare the leading terms. So this is what we have here. We're trying to find horizontal asymptote. And this time, they are equal. x squared is equal to x squared, or actually it's the twos that are equal to each other. That's what we really care about. When, when the degrees are the same, then it's going to be y is equal to a over b. And in our case, it's just going to be y is equal to 1 over 1, or just 1. So our asymptote is going to be at 1. So let's just go ahead and draw that in here. Put dotted line in there, because that's the horizontal asymptote. And let's go ahead and put in what we learned from the last one. We found out that our vertical asymptotes, this was our horizontal asymptote, and our vertical asymptote is at 3 and negative 1. So let's put those in here. And what else did we find out? We found out the y-intercept was 0, 0, and that the zeros of our graph are at negative 3 and 0. So now we have to continue on where we were. Determine if the graph crosses that horizontal asymptote. So we say that x squared plus 3x over x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to that horizontal asymptote of 1. So we multiply by x squared minus 2x minus 3 so that we can clear the fraction. And when we do that, we have x squared plus 3x is equal to that. I'll just leave it since it's in black. This is what we have right here. So let's gather everything to one side if we need to because we got quadratics. But when I do that, if I take this x squared to this side, they're just going to cancel each other out. So now I have negative 2x minus 3 plus 3x. So we want to take this 2 to the other side. And that will give me negative 3 over here is equal to adding that will give me 5x. And then I have x is equal to negative 3 fifths. In fact, I'm going to put it on this way. Negative 3 fifths. So now we need to see that we have a point here. And we know it's going to cross here at negative 3 fifths, which is somewhere before negative 1. I have a point here in this region. I have a point in this region. But I might like to have a point over here on this side just to verify the things I think. So I'm going to cho choose let's say 4. So x is equal to 4, so 4, 4 squared plus 3 times 4 all over 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3 and we get 5.6. So if we are at 4 here, we're at a little bit more than 5, so it's up here. So we said that our graph has to be in this region. It's got to go through this point because it's an x-intercept. So I'm going to draw my graph to look something like this. And then I know that it switched sides. That's what I was expecting. 
because they, it was an odd degree on that vertical asymptote. And I have to come through that point that I found, plus I have to find this y-intercept. But I also know that i got to get over here to this vertical asymptote, because I'm going to switch sides over here. So my graph is going to probably look something like this. And then I come back on the other side of my vertical asymptote. I'm back on top. And it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote, because we only found one place that it crossed it. So it should stay above that horizontal asymptote. Use the asymptotes, zeros and multiplicities to construct an equation for the graph and be sure to find a value for a. If we think about the equation, we have the zeros of the numerator and then we've got the zeros of the denominator and these are x-intercepts and these are vertical asymptotes. And then we can check the degrees. Remember here, if we're checking the degree here, that means it's even, will bounce, and odd will cross. And if we're looking at vertical asymptotes, even will not change sign, and odd does change sign. And then the only thing we have to do is find that value for a. So let's see what we have. We have vertical asymptote at x equal negative 3 and x equal positive 3. Negative 3 is between that negative 2 and negative 4. And between the 2 and 4 is going to be 3, because my scale is 2. And then the x-intercept, there's only one, it's at 0, 0, so we have x equals 0. We see that this one is has to be an odd because it crosses at that point. And let's go back and look at x equal negative 3. On the left-hand side, it's above the x-axis, and on the right-hand side of that asymptote, it's also above the x-axis. So this one here is going to have to be even. And then at positive 3, on the left-hand side of that one, it's in the negative. It's below the x-axis, and it jumps up on the other side to be above the x-axis. So this one will have to have an odd degree. And the only other thing we have to worry about is a. So now we have to think about the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, because we don't see a dotted line anywhere. So it must be the x, and you can see it's tending toward the x-axis. And that means that the degree of the numerator has to be less than the degree of the denominator, which earlier we called m. So let's see what we can do. y equal, and then we have our a, and x equals 0, the factor would be x. And on the bottom, we have x equal negative 3, so it would be x plus 3. And that would be an even degree, so it would be squared. And then it will be x minus 3 when x is equal to 3. And that's an odd one, so we'll just leave it x. This is a degree 3, which is bigger than degree 1, so we're good there. So far, so good. Now we have to use this negative 2, 2 here is going to plug into our equation. So we have 2 is y equal to a times negative 2 over negative 2 plus 3 squared and negative 2 minus 3. So 2 is equal to negative 2a. And on the bottom here, this is going to be 1 squared or 1. And this is negative 5 times negative 5. Clear the fraction. So we want to multiply both sides by negative 5 to clear that fraction. And those cancel. Now we have negative 10 equal to negative 2a, and a is equal to 5. I'm going to get rid of my a and replace it with 5. And this is the function.